The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien coming to you live. It's Monday morning. Markets marginally lower, looking at NASDAQ negative by seven points currently, or one-tenth of a percent, trading at 67.43. Dow Jones almost positive, off less than one point, trading at 23.421, and s and is negative by one point, trading at 25.80. Morning, Tom. What's happening? What's happening? So we have the market... Much lower than it is right now to start things off at about 9 o'clock. And as, as the hour has proceeded between 9 and 10, it's been creeping higher. Another day, another dollar, right? Another day, another dollar. And you know what's interesting here? So it's going to be wild watching this whole thing shake out because what we did have last night is that you had Asia down last night pretty good. Europe was down. You know, we were down slightly, seven S&P points. And market opens up, it comes roaring back. Bottom line, we'll see whether it can hold the market. I mean, thus far, it's held every day right <laughs> yeah this is not new territory for sure no, it's not for sure you know, we get we get the gold contract up 380 uh silver's up 13 cents that's getting a bid uh king dollar uh that's still uh that's up 122 ticks 94 400 and i know we're gonna have our man mr james uh john jameson on at uh 10 30 and what a day they book him man that that bitcoin if you didn't if you were in front of a machine folks and uh, you saw uh, how Bitcoin was moving around last night. Uh, it was insane. The, it had a 1,200-point spread from highs to lows last night, which is just amazing. You had a high out here of uh, 68.14. You had a low of 56.05, and you're at 65.33. That's that a wild? volatility, right? Oh, my God. That's <laughs> a, it's unbelievable. Seriously. Because the, the market couldn't, meaning the, the Bloomberg... <clears throat> writers couldn't keep up with it because first they had on their site uh let's see uh i can find this a thing crash right, now. right yeah exactly yeah exactly i had seen that as well billion dollars yeah 38 billion dollars but then it reversed yeah right exactly <laughs> well wow. why not we'll give a plug right now we'll get john on here at 10 30 but you know the reason why we're bringing him on to talk about it larry and he are doing hidden secrets behind trading and investing in cryptocurrencies this wednesday two days from now 5.30 till 6.30, so get over there and sign up for Fibonacci 24-7, and we'll be talking to John in about 20 minutes, 10.30. I had a great conversation with him Thursday um, for about two hours, and he's going to have some insightful commentary because he had given me a heads up about maybe a pullback in Bitcoin, and it, and yeah. it had to do with... Um, you know, some of the shoot-offs they had going on last week yes. and, and some volatility there. And, um, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to him because he had a, a heads up that that may be pulling back. And we'll see. Talk about a short-lived pullback, though, in terms of uh, already getting a rebound. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. You know, we go over to the bond market. You get the 10-year note up 2. You get the 30-year bond up 10. Uh, if we do uh, go into the Dow Industrials right now because uh, they all uh, get that uh, green paint out here. Uh, inside the Dow, the Dow just went positive. So uh, notes, um, I mean, uh, points inside the Dow. You get Boeing putting eight points positive. Home Depot, seven and a half. Procter & Gamble, seven and a half. Taken away from it, Goldman's nine negative. You get Travelers, five negative. GE is five negative. You know, and I heard you talking about on that update, if we do go over to Tommy about GE and the Yes, their dividend, dividend. sure. And, folks, if you take a look at GE, what's happening now is that you're breaking another B point of an ABC structure down, and you're breaking it with volume. So we're down 79 cents. You're at 1970. You've already done 42 million shares. Uh, for a confirmed ABC structure down, you only need 81 million. So now you've got a price projection of 1647. And what's going to be wild here, man, just watching this thing, it looks like, uh, you know, this, this, this is game for the highs of the low of 2009. That would be 1135 because there's not much holding this up, uh, you know, once you, well, actually, yeah, though, okay, so we got, 
that high volume low in 1937, but that's going to blow that away, man. Yeah. It's, um, and it's kind of interesting just that that would, that they'd have the negative move today only because, you know, I think if you're an owner of GE, you know, you want a dividend, but you also want a company that can be successful, right? And it seems like they definitely need some restructuring there. They do. Yeah. They do. And I think the real problem is, is this is no transparency inside their numbers. That's, okay. It seems that these analysts are saying that, hey, listen, man, they do this for a business and they're having a hard time finding out if they actually have cash. Okay. So what happens on balance sheets, folks, okay, you know, you can have cash, non-cash earnings. And on Friday, there was two or three analysts that were coming out saying they don't even know if they have cash. Sure. Basically. I mean, yeah, it, just a balance sheet a, is not your cash flow statement. Those are two different, you know, right. just straight out in accounting. Exactly. Right. For sure. Uh, they said there's a hundred different variations that they'd have to run just to find out, you know, where the money is. Okay. Show me the money. Isn't that intense, man? It is. That's pretty amazing. Definitely. That's, you know. How about, did you see the story? We'll jump to... Airbus um, and Boeing, did you see the story about, so they have the Dubai Air, Air Show going on, right? And um, I'll pull up the article. So Airbus suffers Dubai blow as Boeing wins surprise 787 deal. So did you see anything about this, Tom? I haven't. No. Oh, so this is good. So, of course, I mean, some of these deals that get done at these shows, you're talking about this one, $15 billion. Um, and talk about, I would love to be in the room of these salespeople when they swoop in and, and steal a $15 billion deal literally as it's about to be announced. So check this out. The press release was printed, the media invited, the first dignitaries began filling into the room. Such was the scene on the first day of the Dubai Air Show when Airbus was planned to unveil a keenly awaited lifeline for its A380 super jumbos from the aircraft's, aircraft's biggest fan, Emirates. Instead, okay. nothing. In fact, worse than nothing, an initial delay. This is at the press conference in Dubai. An initial delay, not unusual at these major signing ceremonies, gave way to confusion, bewilderment, turned to humiliation when a model aircraft was carried into the briefing room with a gray cloth covering it slipped off, revealing a Boeing logo on its tail. And with that, basically, it goes in the article that basically um, Airbus Emirates announced on ice representatives of the U.S. plan. Um, plane makers swooped in instead to take the stage in room wow. six. So they literally walk into the room, take the stage, and be like, guess what? We're the ones that closed the deal. And uh, Emirates committed to buying $15.1 billion of Boeing 787-10 Dreamliner. Um, that was a similar to order value that Airbus had planned. $15 billion, and it seems like they were minutes away from, from, <laughs> from announcing it. Um, so and then, there it is. And if that says anything, it's not over till it's over, right? Oh man, that, that, that's, that, a, that's a Tom Brady play. We'll call it a Tom Brady play, sure, for yeah. sure. They had a good game last night. Got it done in Denver. Um, but wow. yeah, I mean that talk about high stakes negotiations, high stakes sales. Um, man, fifteen billion dollars. You're moments away from announcing it. One company gets it, the other company doesn't. So Boeing up almost one percent today. And I'd say that factors into it for sure. Oh, big time. All right, Amazing. folks, come on back. We'll be back. we got one more segment. Markets trying to get positive. NASDAQ right next to it. NASDAQ off less than a point. Dow Jones up 24 now, and S&P's positive as well. We'll be right back, folks. Larry Pezzavento and John Jamison are teaming up for a live hour-long webinar Wednesday, November 15th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time titled The Hidden Secrets Behind Trading and Investing in Cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are some of the most volatile trading markets in the world right now, and this is a webinar that you will not want to miss. In this live 60-minute webinar, John and Larry will discuss a variety of topics, including where cryptocurrencies trade and how to get started, how to recognize supply and demand in cryptocurrencies, and the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum, and why knowing this one piece of information puts you in the top 1% of cryptocurrency traders, as well as many more topics. Visit the front page of TFNN.com for all the information and to sign up today for Fibonacci 24-7, and we'll see you Wednesday, November 15th, for the hidden secrets behind trading and investing in cryptocurrencies. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We take your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, everybody. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. So markets jumping around a bit, looking at a NASDAQ negative by three points currently, Dow Jones up positive by 15 points, and S&P's negative by one point. Gold positive by $3.60, $12.77. So gold had quite a day for it. So Friday, I saw on the gold report you were talking about it. We were talking about it, of course, on Friday. Yes. Four million ounce trade, um, 40,000 contracts. Quite a number, and, and as you said, you know, only a $10 movement. And when you talk about a $5 billion trade, which is what it is, trading 4 million ounces when each ounce is $1,250 plus, um, simple math, $5 billion trade, and, and gold, you know, had the buy orders somewhere beneath it within $10 to kind of support that type of a sell. Isn't that amazing? It is. It. It, it, I agree. It, it, that, folks, okay, you know, we've been in the gold market long enough. I've seen... 10,000 contracts take gold down $25 in a heartbeat. Sure, then, you know, definitely. So it, it is amazing. I mean, there's some, there's someone's laying underneath there because, you know, 10 bucks is nothing in the gold market. Uh, you know, and we'll, Especially we'll see. for $5 billion, I would agree. Because oh 10,000 contracts, that would be about a 1.25, 1. actually 10,000 would be just to add the zeros. It'd be 1.277, you know, um, billion dollar trade. But yeah, $5 billion sell order. And there were buy orders somewhere within ten dollars, which is pretty cool if you're a bull, for sure. It, it, there's no doubt. It, you know, it's even. It seems that's even hard to comprehend, right? I, I agree. Mean, that, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm even having a hard time. Like, wow, there was that much just sitting there. That's pre that's pretty intense, man. So, yeah, no, I agree. Five know. billion dollar trades are, are tough to comprehend in their own yeah. right, right? Seriously. Yeah. No doubt. Seriously. Uh, if we uh, go over to the NDX 100, let's go see what the strength versus the weak weakness, because there's no doubt that the uh, the NDX, as did the, you know, the S&Ps, they went from down seven to positive. So inside the NDX, leader out here is Hasbro. It's up 7.5 percent. They want to. They're talking to Mattel to take them over. JD.com's up five. You got Holog uh, Hologic up uh, 1.5. Taken away from it. Disney is. I mean, Discovery is down 2.9. Vodafone is off 1.8, and Regeneron is down. 1.8. Nothing really big uh, inside that NDX right now. Uh, let's go over and we take a look at uh, Apple and see where Apple's at. So Apple right now, 
It's just slightly off the tie. You're at 174.16. Um, you know it's pretty cool, so check this out. This is coming across the headlines, folks. Uh, flying cars, okay? I mean, technology-wise, man, we're really moving. So let me find this thing again. The, um, yeah, here it is. Volvo. So the, the Chinese own Volvo now. They bought Volvo a few years ago. Okay. Um, uh, rather than just put more vehicles on the world's congested roadways, Volvo's owner, uh, which is... I can't really pronounce yeah. it, uh, but it's Zizhang, a holding company. Maybe Zizhang. Yeah, yeah yes. Geely Holding, a Chinese. Sure, go ahead. Uh, the Chinese uh, automobile manufacturers has acquired a U.S. company trying to bring flying cars to the market in 2019. It's almost 2018. Oh. That's, that's I crazy. Know. <laughs> Founded by five MIT grads. Oh, well, there you uh, go. They also plan to deliver the first vertical takeoff and landing car by 2023. This is like, this is, we really got the Jetsons now, man. Hey, we keep saying it, right? Technology's coming faster than any of us think in terms of, you know, first it's just oh. going to be self-driving cars, yep. um, but it's going to be self-flying cars pretty soon. Right. Well, yeah. hey, listen, I was reading this morning, um, right in Tampa um, at the Marriott, the, uh, this is in the paper this morning, I believe it's either tomorrow or the next day, um, there's a show there, Tom, right? Yes. And and they have folks, um, this is going to be the first self-driving car on one of your streets down there. It's only going a half a mile, but they're actually going to put people in it. Okay. And, they're going to do a yeah. little demonstration, right? And a little yeah, little... There's, there's a show in town. It must be the okay. convention center be between sure. that and the, and the Marriott. But sure. I was looking, I said, this is going to be crazy. So yeah. it, it fits 14 people with seven people standing. That's what they said. It's gonna, standing. You know, Interesting. I know. That's what I thought. Yeah, <laughs> no, they can, fourteen people can sit and then seven people can stand. Interesting. Yeah, just I mean, you think like a, a train trolley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild. Oh boy. Now that'll yeah. be interesting, right? As in, uh, do they safety-wise, you're not allowed to stand on on cars on the road. So why are you going to be allowed to stand on cars when there's automated yeah. drivers? Um, I know. Yeah. It must be on private property. That's all I'm figuring. You know yeah, what I mean? And that's like it's, part of what they yeah. have is they have a PR battle. And as I say, they, you know, every car manufacturer of automated drivers to, to get people used to the fact of a computer driving you around. So I think there's going to be a lot of types of demonstrations, exhibits, because people aren't going to be comfortable with computers driving them around in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, listen. Yeah. I remember the first time just getting on the mono trail at uh, yeah. Disney. Like, mono yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, wow, okay, hold it. How's this go? Exactly. But, no, exactly. You know, we'll get used to it, I guess. Right, no, it'll come. It'll come, for sure. You know, if we do uh, take a look at that, uh, let's go th look at that gold market for a second. So inside that gold market, what we want to see out here today is you got 150,000 contracts. If we get 250, 300, that's not bad. I'd like to see a little more price spread. It's holding up. I mean, you know, yeah. bottom line, it's holding up. But I want to see some real force topside because it was interesting. Um, I was on with Kevin Hinks this morning um, and on their network, right? And he was talking about, we were talking about gold. and it, he, had, he had a good point. It, it was like that the gold contract, yes, it ate that type of um, That's order up. up. Sure. But he was saying... Where the big orders are, that's what you better watch out for. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. ooh, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, if you've got someone selling, you, you yeah. got to be careful. With that's, it, and you know, and that one was at what, like 1285, 1286? Yeah. That sell order. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Man, oh, man. Yeah. Um, the note and bond market, they just continue to refuse to, to basically get to lower price. You know, what we did out here this morning. It's pretty cool, folks, okay? Uh, you know, we came down hard uh, on Friday. You know, there's, there was some volume behind that move, but all of a sudden this morning, guess what? You get under the lows again, and it's rejecting the price. It's rejecting this uh, 124.21. It's like, hey, that thing, you know, looks to me like you're going to get a rejection of lower price once again, which is just a mind blower because of the fact that, you know, rates, long rates, short rates, bottom line, doesn't look like they're going anywhere but lower or flat, which, you know, the Fed's saying they're going up on short-term rates, and, you know, if, if inflation kicks in, you know, it would seem that 
rates would have to go up. If the tax bill goes through, it's like the deficit uh, is going to go up. How are they going to pay for the de deficit? They certain, that, and that's going to be interesting, too, because if, in fact, the deficit does go up, then, a lot, then there's going to be a battle between the government and the Fed, because every time they raise rates, the, the lot, biggest borrower, of course, is the U.S. government. So it's sure. like, man, then, then it can go through the moon. You and know really, I mean? realistically, the only argument is how much it's going to go up in this, to put it in context. I mean, the Republican yeah. talking point is it won't go up by more than $1.5 trillion. Trillion, right. So that's the low-end estimate. And from there, we go up. Yeah. Huge. All right, folks, come on back. We'll be right back. We're going to have a man, John Jameson, talk a little Bitcoin. And uh, we'll be right back. Dow, every market positive now. Dow Jones up 18. NASDAQ positive by a point. S&P is positive by 1.6. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Markets all positive now. NASDAQ positive by two points. Dow Jones positive by 23. And S&P is positive by 1.5. So Wednesday, Larry Pesavento and John Jameson going to have a great workshop, 5.30 till 6.30, talking about cryptocurrencies. And we're lucky to have our man John Jameson back on the show. John, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Morning, John. How you doing? Doing well. Oh, very good. Thank you. So this well, is... 
Another timely interview, man. Um, we spoke last week, of course, um, talking about Bitcoin and some of the upcoming topics you're going to be talking about on Wednesday with Larry. And we had quite a move in Bitcoin over the weekend. We did, yeah. So and, uh, why yeah. don't, if you could, we'll just jump right into it. I know you talked a little bit about what we saw happening last week, but for the listeners, kind of just giving a perspective maybe of what we had fundamentally going on in Bitcoin last week and, and why you maybe saw some of the volatility that might be coming down the pipeline for it. Sure. Well, we've had an incredible run up in Bitcoin, uh, the original Bitcoin coin, as we know. And part of that was due to something called uh, SegWit and the uh, SegWit 2X, which was a plan to um, fork off uh, to a, a, a parallel version of Bitcoin. Well, as we know, that got cancelled. And um, in reaction to all this, back in August, another coin, yet another coin called Bitcoin Cash, was um, spun off from the original Bitcoin Core. And it, had so, it has some technical um, innovations that um, could, could very well mean that it becomes the new Bitcoin or the real Bitcoin. So um, whether this is, uh, because we did see some incredible moves and we've gone from $650 up to just under two and a half thousand dollars in a weekend and then, you know, and then back down a thousand dollars. So it's hang on to your hats. But um, what we're going to be talking about on Wednesday is exactly the technical reasons why this move happened. Yeah. It's pretty cool. We were, we were talking for a couple hours. I think it was on Thursday, right? And um, we talked about the run up and we talked about the volatility and the possibility that we could see a run down. And last night I pulled up Bloomberg and same thing with you, Tom. You were saying you saw the articles and before the articles could even keep up talking about a crash, Bloomberg got a rebound and was, and was back up to right now. I think it's like 65, 87. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so... Yeah, just so, so what else are you going to be talking about on the webinar on Wednesday, John? Well, I think the thing that we're trying to address is the um, frustration of quite a lot of people. I know a lot of people that I talk to, they can never really get the big picture. If you spend a bit of time online, and I'm not sure whether you have, or you probably have, but you probably ended up quite frustrated trying to put it all together. So that's the overall goal of Wednesday, is nice. to give uh, people who turn up basically to put them in the top 1% of everybody who knows anything about Bitcoin. Now that's a, a bold and a, a bit of a task, but I, uh, we can do it. And uh, it'll, it's, we're going to cover pretty well everything uh, from the context of why Bitcoin, why now, the technology behind it, and most importantly, uh, cryptocurrency fundamentals, which are the most difficult to get your head around. But that's only because um, the people who are explaining it online are technical people. And technical people, unfortunately, 99% of them are suffer from what I call the curse of knowledge. And they just don't understand that the rest of us have no idea what they're talking about. So Knowing and teaching are two different things sometimes, right? For sure. <laughs> sure. So the goal of Wednesday is to, is to be able to give, some, give anyone who turns up really a, a clear understanding of all of the issues going on. And not only that, but how to trade it, you know, how to take a position in it. Now, I know, John, we spent two hours literally on the phone talking about this, so we could sit here for probably four hours having this conversation. But two, sure. of, the, two of the biggest cryptocurrencies that people, myself included, know are, of course, Bitcoin, and then Ethereum is the other big one making name for itself. Um, could you maybe give listeners just a little bit of a difference of, of where those two differ? Because uh, we talked about some of that, uh, just to give them a tease about what you might be talking about Wednesday. Yeah. Um one of the most important questions you can ask when you're um, about to take a position in a currency, in a cryptocurrency, is to ask not only who's backing it, but what's it, what problem does it solve? What is that, what is that currency or token being designed to do? And Bitcoin essentially is, was originally designed as a store of value. And so the big debate, or let's just say argument that's going on right now, is, is Bitcoin a store of value or is it a currency? And so those are topics that, we, uh, that I'm going to cover on Wednesday in depth. And to answer your question about what is Ethereum, Ethereum, although it is a cryptocurrency, is actually designed in a different way. It's designed for a different job. And eventually Ethereum will be a, uh, a globalized application uh, that will be able to run uh, new forms of, um, of agreements called smart contracts. 
So right now, Ethereum is a um, is a technology that is it's a cryptocurrency, but its long term end is a little bit different, and um, that is important to know if you're going to start trading these currencies. I tell you, I myself have just got caught up in a little bit of a rabbit hole of YouTube videos trying to dig even more into that with Ethereum and just kind of blockchain technology. Once you start trying to find information, man, it's a little bit tough. I'd pull up one video, it would have nothing to do with anything. And I'd pull up another one and it had some 10, 15 minutes of great information. Um, I tell you what, we have a caller. Let's jump to a caller. We have our man Paul from San Jose. We've talked to him before about cryptocurrencies. Paul, good morning. Good morning, guys. How you guys doing today? Doing great. Yourself? We're doing fantastic, man. Man, I'm doing awesome because this weekend, I'm telling you, so uh, I had a question for John, but just a, a general kind of statement in the beginning. This Bitcoin cash over the weekend, yeah, Bitcoin, the the normal Bitcoin, the one that was like 7,800, was coming off the high with huge volume, a nasty candle on the two-hour chart. But this Bitcoin cash was going to the moon. It just kept breaking highs. Once it broke 700, it went all the way to 2,700 um saturday night and then came all the way back down right now it's trading at 1100. do you know my question is john which coin is gonna is the futures contract gonna be based off of and what is the deal with uh bitcoin gold or is there gonna be three bitcoins or how is it all gonna shake out well that's a, that is a great question and that's the that is the key question so to answer that it um it's quite complicated because we have to go through what's been happening over the summer. As you know, there was a New York agreement where a, um, uh, the digital currency group was um, proposing and basically formed an agreement with a large number of the business side of the, of the Bitcoin space to, um, to change fundamentally what Bitcoin was, and that was to increase the block size. So uh, that didn't happen because it would have, in, in, in Bitcoin talk, that would have caused a split, which is called a hard fork, which is a permanent divergence in the chain. Now, to answer your question about the coin, uh, I think Bitcoin Cash has a much uh, bigger future than people are maybe may putting their money on right now. And uh, there's quite a lot of reasons for that, which I go into in depth on Wednesday. So uh, I hope that answers your question. But um, I and think that, and, and just finally, the reason is um, the block size increased to eight megabytes, and the fact that if large retailers start coming in, it's the transaction time that will, that, that will the advantages that that gives. Okay, great. Well, I'll Paul. definitely be there for the webinar, and trading these things is, is really fun. These things are uh, they're very volatile, though, so beware. Paul, well, thank it, you so it, much. John, yeah. thank you so much, man. We appreciate it, and we look forward to the webinar on Wednesday. Fantastic. Great to be on. Thank Thanks, you, man. John. Have a great one. Have a safe one. We'll be right back, market folks. volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. 
Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN. TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. We're getting a little bit of volatility. Now we have the NASDAQ negative by 7 points, 67.43. Dow Jones positive by about half a point, and S&P's negative by one. Um, so that was a great little interview for oh. sure. We wanted to leave it there because John has so much great stuff along with Larry to talk about. Yeah, people... you were teasing everyone. <laughs> well, you know, it's like instead of going into too much right now because, uh, and the other problem is I literally, what did I say to you? Now, was it Thursday? It was your birthday, right? Yeah, Thursday you was your birthday. two hours. I and know. I said, you know, I saw you that night and I said, I just had a two-hour call with John Jameson, man. And, and right. it was a great call. And we were just talking about a lot right. of um, stuff to do. And that was a great question by Paul as to what, Cryptocurrency is going to win out, right? Yeah. But that's the, the money question of them all, right? That's like saying where are rates going to be in two years. And if you know the answer to that question, you can know the answer to a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, but it's, and that's what John and I spent a lot of time talking about the different uses for each one um, versus, uh, you know, where the future may, may deviate to, to which one can kind of win out. And, and really what he went through was the fundamental use of each one, which is kind of what, you know, he started to talk about with that's Bitcoin. That's the supply and demand there, right? That, exactly. Totally, totally. Because yeah. what's it going to get used for? What is its purpose? Because if you understand what its purpose is for, then you understand, you know, does it have a true space um, yes. to be there, to, to be around. And, 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 they, and as he said, if the large companies are going to start using it, they got to be able to do hundreds of thousands of transactions. Sure. M and that, millions of transactions. Just look at it, Alibaba. You want to oh, see something crazy right. folks. Uh, yeah. Let's pull that up for a second. So the, the amount of transactions that were done, I had this up, but so Alibaba is at $185 and 93 cents. Let's see if we can get this. This is like, uh, where are you? Maybe going to, yeah, there you go. Okay, let's see. That's I know, because this has to do with their singles day. Yes. And there it is. Okay. So, Alibaba singles day generated a record 25.3 billion, billion U.S. in sales. <laughs> that. That is, so they, they're they selling discounted lobster, iPhones, refrigerators, 225 countries participated. Um, they have, oh, here it is right here. The, at the peak, the company's processes were handling 256,000 transactions per second. That is an amazing statistic. That's, it's just, it's unbelievable. Man, it's, so what yeah. is what is that time? Let's see. I want to see what that is per uh, a minute. What is 256,000? Times 60. Good luck. 15.3 <laughs> million transactions every minute. Yeah. Pretty How's cool. That? Right? Pretty Next cool. Next year, they plan on making it even bigger. So, of course, every year. that that And that was a... 
a growth, folks, of 39%. Citigroup thought they were going to grow by 30. They grew Man. 39%. 39% on a monster number. That is amazing. Yeah, well, that's only half of the growth rate. Last year, the event still dwarfs others, such as Black Friday. Um, yeah, China is a force to be reckoned with, man. You know, as, as big as Amazon is, geographically, the United States right. is just so much smaller than China. Um, oh, we're tiny. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Powerful, tiny, though. Well, you know, economic-wise, we're powerful. Military, we're powerful. 320 million people, man. That's it. So, pretty intense. That is. No doubt about that. The, um... Oh, where was I going here? The... Oh, Chipotle. Chipotle's got another trip happening, too. So Chipotle, uh, they're saying that there's no uh, link. I guess it's uh, an actor. That's uh, Jeremy Jordan. He's blaming um, Chipotle for getting sick. Oh, man. Yeah. And he, <laughs> they're saying that, that, no, that's not the case. But the bottom line is that you get Chipotle trading down another 587 uh, It was as low as uh, $15 this morning. So these, these guys have some big problems. There's no two ways about it. And man. just to put things in context, and China is serving more than China, too, of course. But just yes. uh, the U.S., 300 and about 23 million as of 2016. China, yeah. 1.4 billion as of 2016. So you're talking about more than four times the population just in China, let alone um, the, what did we say, 215-plus countries or regions that they're servicing. Um, so... So yep. be wary Huge. of the Alibabas of the world. Oh. Okay, hey, listen, so this, look at this one, folks. This is, is going to be really intriguing because this is happening, and it's happening quick. Budweiser's ex-marketing chief, the, the top dog five years ago in Budweiser, guess where he's going? Or he has been. What's cannabis. He, what's, cannabis. Yeah. So check it out, folks. This Bud's for you is taking a whole new meaning for Chris... <laughs> Uh, Burberry, if maybe. Yeah, the former chief back in an office in Heiser Bush. Um, InBev, the brewer of Budweiser, is moving from barley and hops to cannabis. And we, there's one thing that he says in here, which you, you can see, and this is where the, there's a lot of big dogs getting in this right now, but they know they are going to get in it. What he's talking about is that he wants to be the Amazon of weed um, as a delivery mechanism. That's, there you a, go. that's what this is about. And what he's saying is that. You, he wants to do it now. These bigger companies want to do it now because they know that the Amazons and the big established companies are still, they still won't get into it because it's illegal in the sure. federal level. Sure. You know? um, but, you know, Constellation Brands is the first one that, that stepped into it. Um, and it's which, interesting, though, because we were talking about it even this weekend, just the business avenue of things with BlackRock. Um, he's probably right yes. that Amazon isn't getting there yet, but he might have less time than he thinks when you have a company like BlackRock pouring a half a billion dollars into warehouse space. Um, right. that, that, you know, part of that has to do with, like you're talking about renting that warehouse space to whether it's the Amazons of the world, but also yep. part of it is is the warehouse space in terms of growing um, indoor cannabis and pot. Right. And, and, exactly. And so I, just like flying cars are coming at us faster than you think. Yep. I think he's onto something saying, you know, and that craft beer business has just exploded. And there's plenty of businesses that I think it's right on the cusp. The only problem with them is that the whole cash deal, because that right. is something that the likes of a public company like Amazon may not want to dive into quite yet. But guess what? There's probably ways to get into it without getting into the cash side, which is what BlackRock did, right? They're going to rent warehouses. Well, they can rent warehouses right. in outside of cash. You just can't sell the cannabis for anything but cash or whatever it is. So maybe you see them creeping in on the outskirts with that potential to dive right into things as it takes off. But Yeah, no, I, there, there's, there's no doubt. Listen to this. This number is pretty, pretty intense. 64% of the U.S. population now wants to lift the federal ban, according to the latest Gallup poll released last month. That's a that's a big number. And just that's, to finish it, that's the lowest rating since the firm started asking about the topic in 1969. The year Woodstock went only 12 percent. So you're talking about in Woodstock, only 12 percent wanted to lift the federal ban, and you know, fast forward today, 64 percent. Yeah, that's when Hopefully they said those, that that weed would still kill you and cigarettes were good for you. How's hey, that? people are still saying, well, they're still saying yeah. weed will kill you. The cigarettes, thankfully, we're past that yeah. garbage for sure.
Stay right. right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the uh, Dow right now uh, down two, Nasdaq's up four, S&P's are flat. We'll be right back, folks. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Markets bouncing around a bit, but still relatively negative. NASDAQ negative by four points. Dow Jones negative by two. S&P's negative by less than one, one point. They're, they're hanging in the red. We'll see, we'll see if they can be there, but that's a far cry. NASDAQ was down, I think it was four-tenths of a percent um, at 9 a.m. this morning. So quite no, a, quite a no boost doubt. for the first hour or two of trading. Yeah, hanging right at the highs, man. Yeah. Hanging right at those highs. Not know. bad. And that's after, you know, the uh, Asia came down pretty good and the DAX in Germany's down good, too. Yeah, so. and that would explain this morning why even at 9 o'clock, maybe we were lower than we were today, but give those bulls the opening bell and they'll see what they can do. And they will take off. Seriously. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, look at that exactly. DAX. That's quite a pullback for sure. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, they, you know, what's interesting is that, you know, in our markets, you had the small caps folks and the... Um, XLF has rolled. That's rolled off the top pretty good. Uh, the DAX has too, you know. So bottom line, the rest of our indices, though, are hanging tough. There's no doubt. We'll see uh, if one will drag the other one down. But thus far, it doesn't look like that's going to be the game here. I'm just checking in on GE as well, see where we are. So 
Off about 3.7 percent. Currently trading 1973. We'll you know it's a yeah. You know it's amazing too. I just read this. So this is disgusting actually. If we were a GE uh, uh, owner, that last year uh, Jeff Ilmot, right? He was the second largest uh, got paid performance. And, and the S&P. Second highest price, paid CEO, I think, right? Is that yeah, what? Yeah, Jeff could earn as much as, what do you know? The second highest among CEOs in the S&P 500. That's like crazy. That's Must like, be nice to just see your stock tanking and just pulling in cash as a CEO yeah. as you're pushed crazy. out the door, right? Crazy. Seriously. Yeah. Stay tuned, folks. we got swim lessons coming up right now. Then, of course, Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and Tom will be back this afternoon. Thanks, man. Have a great afternoon. Have a great one. Have a safe one, folks. You too, man. Okay. Thanks, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.